together with you this Sunday after Christmas as we celebrated the birth of our Savior. I hope you had a Merry Christmas. I pray that it 
was merry for you, that you enjoyed the time of celebrating Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. You may be seated this morning. As, you, as you're seated, would you just tell somebody, good morning, it's good to see you. And would you grab your connection card as you're being seated in the seat back in front of you or maybe in the seat beside you, you should see a connection card. We just want to take a moment and welcome all of our first-time guests. We want to welcome all of you who may be watching online either now for the first time or maybe you watch online every week or every time you're out of town. Uh, we want to say good morning to Pastor Tim and his family is there out of town in uh, Jacksonville today and uh, for Pastor Kevin and Miss Melissa, would you be in prayer for their family? Miss Melissa lost her father this week, if you, if you hadn't heard that already. If you would just be in prayer for them and pray for them and just let them know how much you love them when they get back and how much you're praying for them. And that we just want to let them know, Pastor Kevin, Melissa, Elijah, we love you. We love your family. We're praying for you guys. We know this is a hard time of loss, especially at the holidays. So we just want to send an extra special prayer to you today. Let's just take a moment and pray for the Clark family. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for sending your son for us to be our peace. God, we thank you for sending our, your Holy Spirit to be our comforter. And right now, God, we pray for our brother and our, our sister and for their family today. God, that you would, you would just comfort them that the God of all peace would rest upon them today in this loss of Miss Melissa's father. God, and that you would just wrap your arms around them, make yourself known to them today, and let them know that we love them and that you love them. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you're a first-time guest, second-time, third-time guest, there's a place for you to mark that on the connection card today. And we just want to take a moment and say hello, welcome to Life Church Birmingham. Can we take a moment and just welcome any of our first time guests today? Say hello. It's good to see you today. For those who may be watching online as well, hello. It's good to see you. My name is John. I am the youth and young adults pastor here. I have the, the privilege of sharing the, the pulpit this morning as Pastor Tim and his family, as I said, are in Florida visiting his family there. So again, if you would just pray for them for safety on their trip, safety on their way back, and that they would just have a good time of refreshing and enjoyment there with their family and friends in Florida. So um, I have a couple of announcements to make. Um, as we get ready for the new year, there's a few things that come along that come to mind at the beginning of the new year. And uh, so January the 8th, Saturday, January the 8th, Men and your sons will have our men's breakfast. Uh, here's going to be a great breakfast. You don't want to miss it. Men, there's going to be prizes. There's going to be contests. Uh, there's going to be great food and a great message. So you don't want to miss it. Go ahead and put it on your calendar. If you need to say, hey, Siri, add January 8th men's cookout to my calendar now, you have my permission to do that. Uh, if you use Google, you can do the same, but say, hey, Google, don't say Siri because Google don't listen to that. So uh, just add that to your calendar. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a great event. And then that Sunday, the next Sunday, January the 9th, we're going to start everybody's favorite thing for the new year, 21 days of prayer and fasting, 21 days of prayer and fasting. I don't know about you, but fasting is an essential discipline, and it helps me to grow. It may not always feel like my favorite thing, but you know what? It is one of my favorite things because it helps me to grow. It helps me to be closer to God. It helps me to be focused. It helps me to, to, to do away with some things even that I know that, that I just, I don't even need that junk. You know, I can, I can put those things aside for that 21 days and it helps me get focused. So just a heads up, go ahead and gorge now. Eat all the sweets. Eat all the junk now before New Year's because January 9th, just kidding. January 9th, prayer and fasting, be preparing now. Some people need a little bit of extra prep time. Like you need to stop drinking Cokes today before the fast to get ready for the fast. So just, just keep that in mind. 
Uh, those are a couple of upcoming things. And then I know the Super Bowl will be coming up. Some people may be excited about the Super Bowl. I'm going to give you a little, uh, a little preview. We're going to do a Supper Bowl party here at the church that night, uh, and we'll do some fun things. Some more info to come on that. That's just a little teaser to whet your appetite for that Supper Bowl party. I don't really care about football, but I do like food. So just going to put that out there. And uh, this morning, one more prayer request for the, the group of the body this morning. Gary Vincent is in the hospital today, uh, so just be praying for him. He's having some ab- abdominal issues, maybe running fever. He's not been able to eat and drink too much. So just be praying for him and his family right now, if you would. It would, uh, it would mean a lot to them and a, a lot to him. And he knows that we're praying for him, and he knows that we love him, and, and he's, he's on our mind. So if you're watching Mr. Gary at the hospital, we love you. We're praying for you. And we'll, we'll, we'll take a moment at the end of service and pray for him together as well. So I, I hope that you all had a Merry Christmas uh, yesterday, enjoying uh, the season of celebrating the birth of Jesus, celebrating the holidays. Hopefully you got some good gifts Uh, whether somebody bought you a really good gift or you just got it for yourself. Either way, um, hopefully you you did. And you you see some things up here on the desk, and I just want to show off one of my coolest gifts this year for Christmas. This is a chopper. It's a a pretty cool gift. My sister-in-law, shout out to Selena and AJ, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law, they got me this for Christmas because you may be asking, why does the youth pastor need a knife like that? Well, so this year we decided to buy uh, some baby meat chickens, some baby meat chickens to raise, and we, we raised them out. They grow out in about eight to nine weeks. So we purchased them as little tiny, little tiny baby chickens, and we raised them to about nine weeks to where they were about seven pounds a piece. And uh, now some of them are in my belly and some of them are in my freezer. So um, this was a really cool Christmas gift. So I hope you got some Christmas gifts that was as cool as mine. And yesterday I used it to chop up some Christmas ham. And it's, it's really sharp and heavy, and heavy. And look, it even came with this really cool display stand. Isn't that that's, that's a really cool gift? So this morning I want to talk a little bit about some gifts. I want to talk about gifts this morning. And um, when, when we first had our daughter Hannah, we started thinking about Christmas. Because you know Christmas changes when you have a little child. Christmas becomes a little different. And so with all of the hype and all of the Santa Claus and all the Frosty the Snowman and all the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and all the Elf and all the It's a Wonderful Life and the Christmas Story, all those are fun things. But we wanted to make sure the center of our Christmas was always teaching Hannah about the birth of Jesus. And so we got this little kit, and uh, it's called What God Wants for Christmas. You know what? That's a good point. So the same person who sent me this really cool gift sent us this really cool gift when Hannah was a little girl. And we use this to teach Hannah about the birth of Christ. So inside are seven different little presents. And basically they open, they, they open up a little present every night leading up to Christmas, seven days before Christmas. And there's this little book inside of there. And the book is called What God Wants for Christmas. So every night they get to open these presents, and inside there's this little fold-out nativity. What does it say? Ooh, ah. Ooh, ah. And, and so every night they open up one of these little presents. Let me see if I can get one out. I'm going to open the last one. So every, every night they open up one of these little presents, and inside there's an angel who goes and tells Mary about uh, that she's going to have a baby. And then the next night they open Mary and Joseph and Jesus and the shepherd and the wise man and so on. And the last night, there's this present number seven for the last night. And they open it up and the whole story is about what does God want for Christmas? What does God want for Christmas? And you open it up and look what's in there. 
a little mirror. It's a little mirror. So they look in there, and it says that God wants my heart for Christmas. What does God want? And it, not like this, he wants my heart, but like, like he, wants, he wants me to follow him with my life, and he wants, me to, he wants me to trust him, and he wants me to give him everything I have. And so we, we've used that every year, even this year, even though she's 12 years old and she's getting older, she's in middle school now, but we still do this every year and we open the little presents and, and go through the, the story of, of God's greatest gift to us, sending his son for us to be born in a, in a manger, to be born of a Virgin Mary. And we talk about what does God want for Christmas. So my first point tonight is this. God wants my heart. God wants my heart. Out of all the gifts that we could give him, out of all the offerings, out of all the things that we could make with our hands, out of all of the songs that we could come up with to sing, out of all the poetry that we may be able to write, out of all of the things that we may be able to perform, the thing that God wants is our heart. He wants us to follow Him. He wants us to love Him. He wants us to trust Him. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that it was the first and greatest commandment. In Matthew 22, if you want to put that on the screen, Matthew 22, 36, 37, and 38, they were asking Jesus, these teachers of the law came to Jesus, and they were trying to trying to figure out if he was legit. And they ask him, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. God wants us to give him our heart so much, it's at the top of his list. It's at the top of his commandment list. It's at the top of, of what all of the law of God, all the teachings and prophecies from the prophets, and all the teachings from the judges, and all of the scriptures from the wisdom books, and all of the poetry wrapped up in the Old Testament and the Bible, all of those things, the most important thing, the thing that everything else is built upon, that everything else hangs on is this, that we love God with all of our heart. God wants our heart, not just for Christmas, by the way, but for every day, for everyday life, not just special occasions, not just when we put on nice clothes and come to church, not just when we have a special singing thing at the church, not just when we have a special children's program. God wants our heart every day. Every, every day, all the things that we do, God wants us to trust Him, to follow Him. It's the best gift that we can give to God is our heart. It's the best gift we can give to God is to give Him all of our heart. But it's also the best gift that we can give ourselves. The best gift that we can give to God is to follow Him and trust Him with our heart, but the best gift we can give ourselves is the same. To follow Him and to trust Him because He is trustworthy, because He is good, because He loves us beyond what we can even comprehend in these finite balls of mush and water inside of our head. He loves us more than what we can even come up with more than what Hollywood can depict, more than what Nashville can sing about. He loves us more than all of those things. See, we, when we give God our heart, He changes us. He takes us from what we would have been and makes us into a new creation that we should have been. He makes us a new creation. Now, my story is one of a young child who was raised to parents who believed in God and 
and trusted him and tried to do their best. They took me to church. They took our family to church. They were probably what most people in America would consider normal Christians. They went to church sporadically every once in a while. They went to church more often than they didn't go when I was growing up. And and my grandparents went to church, and my mom's dad was a, uh, a preacher, and my dad's dad was a carpenter who was on the board at the church, and uh, he helped in the church with uh, their finances and with their uh, they had this little book library that they would lend out books about their missionaries in the church, and he, he kept track of those types of things. And uh, so they were very involved in church, and, and that's how I grew up. I grew up learning about who Jesus was and loving God from a young age. And because I loved God from a young age, because I decided I want to follow Jesus and I want to I live for him and I want to tell other people about him, when I was a little kid, when kids came over to my birthday parties, we'd stay up playing Nintendo all night long, and when we took a break, I'd share the gospel with them in my bedroom. And so, uh, and then when I when I would go to school, I would lead Bible studies in the morning and share the gospel with kids and, and see kids get saved at the school in the morning before school started. And so from a young age, I felt the call of God on my life to tell people about Jesus and to lead people to Jesus. I didn't always do everything right. Sometimes I made mistakes. Sometimes I did things that I knew I wasn't supposed to do. Sometimes I still do things that I know I'm not supposed to do. But I still trust God. And when I make mistakes, I turn those things over to him because he says that I can cast those things to him and he will cast them as far away as the east is from the west. So because I've trusted him, because I've followed him with my life, He's kept me out of a bunch of trouble that I could have been in. He's kept me from getting hooked on drugs, right? He's he's kept me from getting all kind of diseases that you get when you do things that you're not supposed to do. You know what I'm talking about. He's he's kept me from all those things. And it's it's been better than um better than the the movie version of a wonderful life because I've trusted God and and I've lived my life for him. Now don't get me wrong, just because you trust God and you follow him doesn't mean your life's always going to be perfect. It doesn't mean that you're never going to have troubles. It doesn't mean that that people aren't going to persecute you or prosecute you, depending on where you where you are in the world, right? And um, people who are Christians this morning are facing hardships all around the world that, that I've never had to experience myself. Some of them because they follow Jesus. So I don't want to paint an incomplete picture for you telling you my story this morning, but I want you to know the best thing that I could give God is my heart and to follow him. And the best thing that I can give myself is to trust God and to follow him. He's changed me from being what I would have been into what I should have been. I want to take a moment and ask you this morning, have you chosen to give God your heart? Have you chosen to trust Him and to follow Him with everything that you have? If you're watching online this morning, I want to ask you that question. Have you chosen to give Him your heart? Are you following Him with everything that you have? I want to take a moment this morning and give us a chance to settle that and get that right right now. Would you close your eyes and bow your heads? You watching online, if you do that as well, just close your eyes and bow your heads this morning. I want to, I want you to take a moment and really think, have I followed the first and greatest commandment? Do I love God with all my heart, with all my strength? Do I serve Him with everything that I have? Have I really given Him my heart? Have I given God what He wants? And that's my heart. Maybe this morning you're in here or you're watching online, you say, Pastor John, I can't say that I have 100%. I can't say that I've given him my heart. I still, I've really really tried to do things my own way. I haven't haven't given given my heart to him to, to do what he's asked me to do. I just try to do things my way. But you know what? You're right. The best thing I can give God is my heart, and the best thing I can do for me is to give God my heart. And today, maybe you you say, Pastor John, today I want to give God my heart. 
that's you, let's pray this together. Jesus, thank you for coming and giving your heart for me, giving your life for me so that I can trust you and follow you and give you my heart. Today, God, I make a decision, not just on special occasions, not just when people are watching, but to give you my whole heart, everything that I have, to follow you, to trust you, and to do what you want me to do. That's it. In Jesus' name, amen. That's what God wants for us, to do what he's calling us to do, to give him our heart. The second thing I want you to know today is that God gives me good gifts. God gives me good gifts. My sister-in-law and brother-in-law give good gifts too, but God gives me better gifts. Matthew 7, 11 says this, If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So my daughter Hannah, she asks us for different things, you know, for Christmas and throughout the year and stuff. And you know what? As a dad, when it's in my power and it's not something extremely outrageous or something that's going to be uh, inappropriate, I do my best to give her the, the things that she wants, right? So we got her pretty much everything she asked for for Christmas this year, I think, uh, because she didn't ask for anything that was outrageous or outlandish, anything that was super expensive. And so it was within our means, it was within our ability to give her some good gifts for Christmas. And so we did. And God has way more resources than, than we do. He has way more resources than we do, and he has that same desire to give us good gifts. Sometimes when we don't even ask for them. Raise your hand when you, if you've ever gotten a gift that you weren't expecting. Like somebody just showed up and brought you something and gave you something, and you, you weren't out expecting it. Yeah, it's, it's really cool when that happens. And so God likes to do that for us as well. He, he gives us good gifts. So if we, even though we're evil, know how to, how to give good gifts, so much more, God, the Heavenly Father, knows how to give good gifts. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. God knows how to give good gifts. The best gift that he's ever given us was sending his son, right? The best gift he's ever given us was sending his son, just like we, the, the scripture that we've probably all memorized since children, John 3.16. God loved us so much that he gave us, as a gift, his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting or eternal life. God knows how to give good gifts. The best gift, his son. We celebrated just yesterday. I don't know about you, but we got up before the presents were open, before... The eggnog was poured, non-alcoholic, of course. I'm the only one in my family, apparently, who likes to drink eggnog either, by the way. Does anybody like eggnog? This good old, yeah. And so eggnog and a chocolate chip cookie is a Christmas morning delight. Before all that, before all that, we sat down and we read Luke chapter 2 and just, just read that birth of Jesus story, celebrating the gift, the greatest gift, God's son Jesus given to us. But God has other gifts that he gives us as well. You know, after Jesus was crucified and rose from the grave, he told his disciples, you know, the Father is still going to uh, send you a good gift. 
He's going to send you another good gift. I was, I was sent to die for your sins, to resurrect on the third day so that you know that the same power that raised me from the dead is the same power that lives inside of you. But when I go, God's got another gift for you. And he's going to send it to you, but you've got to wait for it. You've got to wait for it. In Luke chapter eleven thirteen, 13, Jesus said, If you, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts. Sounds familiar, right? How much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So in Acts chapter 1, Jesus is telling his disciples about this gift that is about to be sent to them, a gift that they're about to receive, a gift that they need to wait for. On one occasion, while Jesus was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. And then a few verses later in verse 8, he says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. God gives good gifts. He, he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for us to, to be resurrected with that resurrection power, that same power that we have access to today that lives inside of us. But he also sent the Holy Spirit so that we'll receive power, so that we'll receive power not to be show-offs, so that we'll receive power not to do some special dances inside the church, so that we'll receive power, what? to be his witnesses. So we we'll receive the power to be his witnesses in our neighborhood, in our home, in our workplaces, in our schoolhouses, so that we'll receive power in our city, in our state, in our country, and even around the world to be witnesses of Jesus, to be witnesses of the kingdom of heaven, to be witnesses of God's gifts. God gives good gifts and he wants us to receive them. He wants us to receive his son Jesus. He wants, to re he wants us to receive his Holy Spirit so that we receive power to be his witnesses. He wants us to receive spiritual gifts. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, We talk about the spiritual gifts that, that God has given us. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for what? For the common good for the common good and to one there is given through the spirit a message of wisdom to another a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit to another the gift of faith by the same spirit another the gift of healings by that one spirit to another miraculous powers and to another prophecy and to another distinguishing between spirits and to another speaking in different kinds of tongues or different languages and to another interpretation of tongues all these are the work of the one and the same spirit and he distributes them to each one just as he determines God gives us good gifts, and he wants us to use those gifts. He wants us to receive those gifts. He gave us his son, Jesus. He's given us the Holy Spirit. He's given us these gifts of the Spirit, but he also gives us natural gifts. 
Is anybody good at working with their hands, making stuff? Raise your hand if you're good at making stuff with your hands. Okay. Is anybody good at art? Is anybody gifted artistically? I know some of you are. Okay. Is anybody, like, really good at cooking? Paying really close attention to this one. Yeah, some of you are good good cooks. Anybody good at, at hospitality? You know that, like, uh, hosting people? making people feel welcome and feel comfortable around you. Yeah. Is anybody good at just like playing games with people, getting people excited and energized about playing games? Yeah. Our 50 up ladies, they they are they are they are back there shaking the whole the whole the whole row there. So God has given us these natural gifts as well. He's given us his son Jesus. He's given us the the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's given us supernatural gifts. Sometimes it's it's easier to recognize our natural gifts, uh, but maybe some of you have recognized spiritual gifts. Raise your hand if you know that God has gifted you with a specific spiritual gift, and you could kind of recognize that what that would be. We kind of read through a, a few of the lists of those. Maybe maybe prophecy. Maybe. Uh, interpreting uh, other languages. Maybe God has given you the gift of discerning uh, spirits. When somebody comes in the room, you can kind of tell what's going on with them. Maybe you don't know everything in their life, but you can kind of feel and tell what's going on, what kind of what kind of person they are. Maybe God has given you the spiritual gift. One of them said the gift of healing, laying hands on and praying for people and they receive healing. Has anybody experienced that? You 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 prayed for somebody, laid hands on them, and 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 see people receive healing. Maybe uh, this is this is my primary spiritual gift, the gift of helps, the gift of helps. Uh, I feel like God has gifted me with the ability to just help people in different scenarios. Um, usually, it involves physically helping them with some physical thing that needs to be fixed. Right. So God has given me that is a natural gift but also I feel like that is a strong spiritual gift and that's that's listed as one of the spiritual gifts so God gives us these good gifts for a purpose for a reason and this is the last point today I am God's gift to others I am God's gift to others now Probably you've heard that before. You've heard that before in a negative way. Well, you just think like you're God's gift, right? Has anybody ever anybody ever heard that before or said that before? Yeah, yeah, I have heard that before. And uh, the truth is, you are. You are God's gift to other people. Now, that may not mean like, guys, that you're God's gift to women or something like that, right? That's not, that's not what we're talking about this morning. But we are, we are God's gift to each other. We are God's gift to one another, to other people. See, all these gifts that he's given us, the, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit, why did he give us the gift of the Holy Spirit? So we'll receive power to be his witnesses to other people. He's given us these spiritual gifts, not so that we can... Uh, not so we can lay, uh, run around laying hands on ourselves, pray for ourselves and get healed, but so that we can pray for one another and see one another get healed or so that we can help one another or so that we can cook for one another or so that we can uh, maybe use our hands and build something for one another or so that, we can, so that we can create something artful for one another. These gifts are not meant just for us to hold on to, but we are God's gift to one another. It's such a compelling uh, command that Jesus tells his disciples before he leaves the earth in Matthew 28, 19, that they are supposed to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. And surely I am with you to the very end of the age. It was so important that we use our gifts to be a gift to one another that Jesus commands his disciples to go to other people. He commands them to go out 
and to, to other people and make disciples, make followers of Jesus. He commands them to go out and tell them that God wants their heart as a gift and that God has good gifts for them. 1 Peter 4.10 Each of you should use whatever gift you have received for what? To serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various form. See, the, the Bible tells us that the early church, after Jesus left the early church, that they had everything in common. Now, when it says they had everything in common, it didn't mean that they all liked to wear green shirts. It didn't mean that they all drove the same kind of camel. What it meant is that anything, what's mine is yours. What I have is for you to use. What I have belongs to you as well. And the Bible says it like this, that they belong to one another just like my right hand belongs to my body just the same way that my left hand belongs to my body. Jesus said that we belong to one another. In the, in the early church, they had this, these things in common, and they carried one another's burdens, and they prayed for one another. In Galatians 6, 2, it says to carry each other's burdens, and it's this way that you fulfill the law of Christ, to carry one another's burdens. The things that are heavy to us to carry, whether they're spiritual weights or whether they're physical things going on in our life, to carry one another's burdens. In the times of hurting, we're there for one another, to sit, to hug, to hold, to cry with. Maybe to bake something really good that could help uplift their spirits. In whatever way that we can to bear one another's burdens. James 5.16, this one's really popular in the church. This is a very popular scripture. You probably all have it memorized. Confess your sins to one another. <laughs> Right? It's, it's very popular. It's, it's the thing that we love to do, just sit around and tell each other how bad we are. Right? Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. How do we be healed? When we confess and when we pray for one another. We've got to tell each other what's going on in our life, the good and the bad. Now, it doesn't mean every person that you meet that you tell them every worst thing you've ever done, right? But it is confessing the things that are going on in our, in our life. Sometimes we, got, we need to talk to somebody about struggles that we're going through. Sometimes we need to share the things that are, that are hurting us spiritually. Not just the physical things going on in our life, but we need to share the hurts that, that are hurting us spiritually. Maybe it's something that we've done to one another that we've got to confess. Hey, I'm sorry that I did this to you or that I said this about you or that I didn't help you with something that I should have helped you with. Sometimes our trespasses are not things that we did, but sometimes our trespasses are things that we didn't do. Sometimes they're not bad things, they're just good things that we didn't do, right? So confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective and fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. We are God's gift to others because we are God's image. We are God's image to one another, to the world around us. Genesis 127, so God created mankind in his own image and in the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. And then in 2 Corinthians 3.18, I like this. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory. So as we trust him, as we follow him, as we give him 
our heart and do what he asks, we are ever increasingly being transformed into his image. So every day, the more we follow him, we should look more and more and more like him. The way that we act, the way that we talk, the way that we treat people should be more and more like him. It should be his image as we share the gift of God that we are with other people. Now, when it says that we're made in his image, it doesn't mean we're like demigods. It doesn't mean that we're like little miniature gods or that we're gods also on the earth. Like that, that theology is out there, so I just want you to know it's out there and it's out there. Right? Like, <laughs> that's, not, that's not what this scripture is saying. That's not what God is saying, that, that we're made in his image, so we're little gods running around on the earth. So just so you know, that is, uh, that is a perversion of this scripture. And that, that God wants us to be transformed into his image more and more every day. God does most of his miracles most of his miracles through people. Most of the miracles that God does on the earth today are done through people, just like you, just like me. That's why we are his gift to others, because God uses us to do his miracles. The greatest way that we see people come to salvation, come to follow Jesus, is through somebody sharing the gospel with them, someone inviting them to hear the gospel. Yes, there are people who may go into a hotel room or a jail cell and find a Bible and, and come to the, to the knowledge that, that God wants them to turn their life to them, but even through that, those things were placed there by other people, right? God uses people to do his work on the earth today. God uses someone who will show it and someone who will say it. Someone who will show God's love to others and someone who will say what God's love is for others. So be a person who will show it and a person who will say it. I'm going to ask the worship team to, to go ahead and make their way. This morning I want you to think about three kinds of people that you are a gift to. Three kinds of people that God wants you to use, wants to use you to reach. The first one, and these are going to be uh, three P words, by the way, three P words. Sometimes using that uh, the, that same letter over and over again can help you to remember things, right? Did, did you ever do that in school, where like you would use like same letters to help you remember things, or or maybe you made acronyms using different letters? Well, this is not an acronym, but uh, three P's, people that God wants you to be a gift to. First, the people who are in proximity to you, people who are in proximity. That means the people who are close to you, right? Whether they live close to you or you, you have a constant connection with them uh, on a regular basis, people who are in close proximity to you. God wants you to reach those people. He wants to use you as a gift to them. He wants you to use your spiritual gifts. He wants you to use your natural gifts to show it and to say it. And then there's people who have the same proclivity that you do. That's a cool word, right? Or propensity may be another P word that fits in there. People who naturally are drawn to the same types of things that you are. Maybe you like football. So there are other people who like football. In case you're wondering, I don't happen to be one of those, but there are a lot of people who may have that similar interest. Maybe you like to cook. There are other people around you who probably have that same interest. So look for people who have the same interests as you, people who have the same natural interests desires, the same natural tendencies to like things as you do. Maybe you like to play video games, right? Raise your hand if you like to play video games.
Does anybody like to play video games? Raise your hand if you had an Atari. Anybody have an Atari when they came out? Okay, okay. Raise your hand if you had a Commodore. Did anybody have the Commodore? Okay, okay. Raise your hand if you had the NES or the Famicom. Anybody have some of those? Yeah, okay. How about the Super Nintendo or Super NES? Yeah. Nintendo 64? Sega Genesis. Sega CD. Sega Dreamcast. Anybody have those? Xbox. If you are a person who likes to play video games, God maybe wants to use you to reach people who like to play video games. What about horses? We have any equestrian people in here? We have anybody who likes horses? Anybody like horses? Yeah? A couple people. Yeah? So maybe God wants to use you to reach people who like horses. Does anybody like just like really like to clean things? Do we have anybody who's like, I love cleaning. I, again, am not on that list. But maybe God wants to use you to reach people who, who have that same kind of interest. God wants to use you to people who have a close proximity to you, people who have the same proclivity as you, and then people who have the same level of perseverance as you. You ever had friendships that are long distance that took perseverance to keep them lasting, right? Raise your hand if you still have some people in your life that the only reason that you're still friends is because of your perseverance to remain friends. Yeah, there's people in our lives like that, right? And so maybe God wants to use you to reach people that it takes perseverance to reach, people who are, who are in an extended reach from you. Maybe, maybe some of those people are missionaries. I have a lot of missionary friends who don't live close to me, who live way around the world, places all the way around the world. But God still wants to use me as a gift to those people. God wants to use me as a gift to those people. Well, Pastor John, how can you be a gift to somebody who lives in South Africa, right? Because they can't even travel here right now. So how, do, how am I a gift to my friend who lives in South Africa? Well, I pray for him and his family. I pray for what he's doing over there, building strong tabernacles so that people can have a place to come and worship and not worrying about, not worrying about it falling down on top of them and not worrying about if there's bad weather, they're still able to come and worship. A place where they can come and bring children to and use as, as school buildings. A place where they can provide fresh, clean water from water wells. How can I be a gift to someone like that around the world? I pray for them. And I give. I give financially so that they can have some of the needs that they have. So that they'll receive money to do the work that they're doing in these places around the world. I have some friends who just got appointed to go and be missionaries in Belize. And I've been I've been to Belize. And I know what the situation is like there and, and the way that I'm a blessing to them, the way that God uses me as a as a gift to those people, again I'm able to pray for them and I'm able to make connections with them. I have some other friends who live in Belize as well, and I'm able to make a connection there with them so that they can do ministry together and reach people and be more effective. But also I send, I send money to them and an offering to them so that they're able to, to buy supplies, so that they're able to support their family and live there and, and live out the call so that they can be a gift to other people in Belize that I may never meet. God wants us to give him our heart. It's the best gift that we can give him. It's the best gift we can give ourselves to follow Jesus with our heart. God has good gifts for us. He sent his son, the best gift that we could ever ask for. And he sent his Holy Spirit to empower us to be witnesses all around the world and even in our own household in our own neighborhood, in our own workplaces. He wants us to be a gift to those around us. 
Acts 2.44. So now all who believed were gathered together and they had all things in common. They sold their possessions and their goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. Relax. <laughs> I'm not asking you to sell everything and give everything that you have so that we can have it all together. But this morning I am asking you to be a gift to those around you, to be a gift to, to those in this room, to carry one another's burdens, to help one another out, and then be, go beyond this room and be a gift to those around you in your neighborhood, at your workplaces, at your schools, in your family, and even maybe to people who are not anywhere close to you. God wants us to serve one another in love. Would you close your eyes and bow your heads this morning? I know today we ask at the beginning, is there anyone today who needs to give God their heart? God's asking for your heart. He wants you to trust Him. He wants you to follow Him. He wants you to give Him everything that you have. Maybe today you need to make that decision if you haven't already. Maybe today you came in and you hear us talk about the Holy Spirit, that God has good gifts for you and, and He gave His Son and He sent His Holy Spirit so that we can receive the power to be witnesses. And Today maybe you're in here and you say, Pastor John, I don't know that I've received this, this power of the Holy Spirit to be a witness wherever I go. Maybe today you want to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Maybe today you say, Pastor John, I don't know what my spiritual gifts are, and I want to ask God to help me to recognize my spiritual gifts so that I can use them and be a gift to someone else. Maybe you say, Pastor John, I have some natural gifts, but I don't know how to use them to, to be a gift to someone else. I want to ask God to help me do that. Today, if any of those things, if if that, if any of those things are you, with nobody looking around, would you raise your hand? Today, I need to surrender my heart to Jesus. Today, I want to receive the power of the Holy Spirit to be a witness. Today, I, I need to recognize my spiritual gifts or my natural gifts because I want to serve others. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Yeah, let's pray this morning. God, we thank you that you are a gift to us. The best gift we could ever receive is your son, that we could follow him with our heart and trust him with our heart and, and do what he commands. The first and greatest commandment is to love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. And the second one is like it, to, to love one another as ourselves. And God, today we pray that you help us to recognize the gifts that we have that you want us to use to be a gift to other people. And God, today for those who haven't received the power of your Holy Spirit, God, to, to, to be a witness to those around them, God, today that you would pour out that gift in this place. God, that we would be bold and powerful and unashamed to share the good news of your kingdom of heaven and that your Son who came to proclaim it God, give us the boldness to be your witnesses in all of our world. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, would you stand up on your feet all across the room? Would you grab your connection card? Maybe on that, maybe you have a, a prayer need this morning. I want to ask our prayer team to come this morning. We're going to make, make some, some room, make some time this morning to pray for one another, to bear one another's burdens. Maybe you have a prayer request. Maybe you have a prayer need. And there's a spot on that connection card that you can fill out your prayer request. And we'll be praying with you. And this morning, the, you know, the prayer team will pray with you. There's a place on that card that you can mark whether you would like to keep that confidential just between the staff or whether you would make that sent out to the prayer team here who would, who would pray over that during the week. We're going to open up this altar and, and the worship team is going to lead us and if you have a need or this morning maybe one of those things that we just prayed about you, you want to come and have someone lay their hands on you 
and pray for you. If you need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit to receive the boldness to be a witness in your world, this morning we're here to pray with you. If you're going through something, we're here to pray with you. If you've got a need in your body, a sickness, an illness, if you've got a family member or friend that, that just needs someone to reach out and pray for them, we're here to pray with you this morning. So as the worship team leads us, I'm going to ask you to come and pray, and then in just a moment we'll be dismissed, and the, the ushers will, will, will stand at the back doors and receive our morning tithes and offerings. Let's worship and pray together. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, the treasures of faith are never enough. And you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now set.
together with you this day after Christmas celebrating the gift that God is to us and, and that God wants us to give him our heart would you would you not just give him your heart today but give him give it to him every day every day I've got to give God my heart every day and I know that he has good gifts for me the gift of his son the gift of his spirit and gifts of natural gifts and supernatural gifts spiritual gifts God wants me to be a gift to those around me. I pray that you would live that way as well. Now, before we leave this morning, our ushers are going to be posted at the back. If you have tithes, offerings, gifts for missions, for missionaries, you can drop that in. You can also give online, give through our app. You can uh, drop a check or drop something by this week. Uh, I would encourage you, if you want to get your tax credit in uh, for 2021, try to get that in by, uh, by Friday and make sure that is at least marked before the 31st uh, if you want to get credit for that this year. Before we leave this morning, I want to take a moment and just pray for Gary Vincent. Pray for him as he's in the hospital this morning. And, and we just pray for a healing in his body, complete healing as he's battling this cancer and as he's just not been able to eat and drink today as he's in the hospital today that we would pray for him this morning can we pray together and believe the prayers of a righteous man are powerful and effective God today we pray for our friend we pray for our brother Gary as he's in the hospital today God we pray your healing we pray your word over his body over his life God your word says that it, it that where, where we are gathered together agreeing on touching any one thing, God, that you will be there in the midst of that request. And, God, we're praying for our brother, for healing for his body. God, that you would remove all cancer, eradicate it where the doctors don't even, they can't even explain, God, what you've done. God, we, we know that you are the God who still works miracles, who still does things that we can't explain. God, you still do the things that we can't do. And, God, we pray today as Jesus told us. God, we pray that your kingdom come. And your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, we pray your will be done in Gary Vincent's body today as it is in heaven. God, healing and health, wholeness to his body, renewal to, to Gary's body. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, we love you. Thank you for being here. We look forward to seeing you guys next Sunday. No midweek services this week. No midweek services this week. We look forward to seeing you uh, next Sunday. And don't forget, men, on January the 8th, put that men's breakfast on your calendar. It's going to be great. We love you. Have a great week.